Hey everyone, Matt here from Dugues Models, and today on the wonderful world of the interwebs, I was reading about uh, sprue cutter recommendations on the Scale Modelers Critique Group, and there was a sizable contingent who swear by Zuron's sprue cutters, which I've never really been that big a fan of. Um, I, on the other hand, am firmly in the Tamiya camp on this one. Um, their sharp pointed side cutters have been fantastic. Uh, they're the sprue cutters I swear by, blah blah blah. Anyway, there was enough back and forth about this. I thought it might be useful to do a couple uh, couple quick cuts and tests to sort of showcase how these work. So let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so here we have our two different sprue cutters. Right here we've got Tamiya's sharp pointed side cutters. Now these, um, for some reason whenever I drop sprue cutters, they always land right on their nose. So this one up here has a tiny little ding that I need to deal with at some point. But, you know, it still works quite well. It's a small little concern. Now one thing about these, if you look at how they cut, they come right together. You know, they have, they have essentially a perfect bite. This is problematic when you are cutting something like styrene rod because it puts a weird sort of kink in the whole thing. So case in point. Bear with me for a minute. So when you have a piece of styrene, you know, hey, look, styrene. Hi, everybody. Now, this thing is great for cleaning up very close to, you know, very close to any part that you're trying to get sprue tabs off of. But if you're cutting sprue, let's get in here like this, and as you can see, you know, the, the cut line here is not perfect when you're cutting through a rod. it Because, you know, the forces on these things are squeezing plastic in different directions, blah, blah, blah. Now, the Zuron cutters have a slightly different mechanism. You know, they, they look similar, if not, you know, much crueler type of implements. But if you look at how they come together, they actually bypass the blade, so they don't come straight together in a perfect bite the way that Tamiya's do. They actually overlap ever so slightly. Now, this is actually pretty good. Now, watch, I'm gonna cut it and it's gonna be all terrible. This is pretty good for cutting through rod because it helps you get a slightly cleaner cut through there. You know, you're not pushing pieces out of the way, etc. So, you know, good for Zuron on that. When I'm cutting through things like styrene rod, I actually like to use these better. However, when it comes to cutting flush to a part, I will take the perfect bite of the Tamiya side cutters over the overbite, essentially, of these guys any day of the week. So, to have some fun with this, I thought, hey, I've got some leftover parts from the 104 that are just sitting around and I'm never going to do anything with, you know. I'm never going to use the uh, plastic ejection seat from the kit, for example or the Vulcan rotary barrels. So, I thought, let's cut them apart. First, I'm gonna kind of free them up from the tree so they're not super unwieldy. So here we've got the bang seat frame. As you can see, we've got little connectors here and here. Now, these are ones where if you don't get it quite right, it's not that big a deal to clean up. You know, it's the bottom of the seat is the back of the seat, who's gonna see it, right? Whatever. It's still easier to get it right. Wow, that one flew. All right, so with Tamiya, you know, I usually start and just kind of get it off the damn tree because the tree's a pain in the ass. There. Now when I come in here, I can take it this way and I just get this thing nice and flush with the plastic. Boom, and done. You know, barely anything there that has to be cleaned up. And same if I want to go over here, this is a pretty thick one. Um, thanks, Italeri, for your awesome sprue tabs. Fortunately, it's on the back of the seat, so who cares how it looks when it comes out? Something I found with these, though, with the Tamiya, is it helps if you shave them down a little bit first. And you come in here, and again, you lay this thing flat, and you just bring them together, and voila. In a very flush cut there, very little that has to be cleaned up. You know, it's, it's hard to complain with that. Now let's bring the Zurons into the mix. 
Now, another thing that kind of slightly frustrates me about these Zurons is I've got big hands. Um, you know, I'm always wearing large gloves, etc. And these things, the the play in them just feels ridiculously large. I feel like I'm losing um, small motor control, and it's kind of frustrating. Anyway, now let's play the same game with this side of the seat. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and cut these guys out. Okay, so we've got, you know, this tab here that we have to get flush. Well, when I put it like this, you see what happens there? There's still a little nubbin right there. Because when the scissor action comes together, this overbite thing goes, Ew, I don't want to do it. And you're left with that stupid nub there that you have to clean up. Now let's try it up here with this guy too. Okay, so then we go over here and we try this. And look at that. More crap that you have to deal with. So as a big fan of not dealing with crap, you know, I, I would urge comparison between these. This is the Tamiya cut. You know, barely anything there to deal with. This is the Zuron cut. Um, definitely something there to deal with. And even better, I can bring the Tamiyas into the game. Line them up right here. And remove at least a good portion of that. This would be a lot easier if I didn't, hadn't dented the nose of these things. But see, it takes that right off. And boom, now we've got a smoother edge on this side. So, everybody wondering about Zurons and Tamiyas, that's the reason I like the Tamiyas better than the Zurons. The Zurons are great for cutting through certain things and they're great, through, they're great in my opinion, for bulk work. Um, the Tamiyas though, and that perfect bite, that lack of the, you know, the stupid little bypass thing that Zuron is so proud of that I think actually cripples their sprue cutters. Um, this sort of straight on like chomp chomp that the Tamiyas do is fantastic for getting right up to the plastic and cutting through those sprue connectors and minimizing the amount of sanding and scraping and swearing that you have to do at your plastic pieces. Um, which when you're dealing with a kit like an Italeri, which, you know, they're awesome for creative sprue placement to say the least, these things are a lifesaver. So if I had to recommend sprue cutters, um, Tamiya sharp pointed side cutters. They're pricey, but they are fantastic. So that's that.